This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is the Dean Show. This is the Dean, this is the Dean Show. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum. That is the greeting of peace, and we wish that upon you. Thank you very much for tuning in to the Dean Show. Today's topic, you've heard it. I'm sure you've heard this word if you are a fan of Islam and you've heard the word Sharia. You might have saw some big signs out there, Sharia, and you're like, what the heck is this? Is the boogeyman coming to get me or what? Today we're going to be talking about Sharia. What does it mean? What is its definition? How does it apply and go with Islam? And how can it affect you? And we're going to be learning all this today here on The Dean Show. Be right back. This is The Dean, The Dean Show. This is The Dean Show. This is The Dean, this is The Dean Show. This is The Dean Show. This is The Dean Show. This is The Dean, this is The Dean Show. 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 Back here with Imam Mustafa Zaid, who is the author of The Lies About Muhammad. People shouldn't be lying. It's childish to lie, isn't it? Yes. It's not good to lie. And you wrote a book called The Lies About Muhammad. Peace be upon the last and final message sent to mankind. And inshallah, at the end of the show, you can tell people how they can go ahead and you know, uh, check you up and go and check up this book, which I really recommend for the people. But today we're talking about Sharia. Yes. What is Sharia? Sharia simply in Arabic means law. Mm -hmm. And it's not the man-made law, it's the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And here is the significance of that. The significance of the law of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who does not need our charity or our praying or our obedience for that matter designed for us the, the law and the manner of life by which we live the most joyful, satisfying, fulfilling life on our way to his utmost prize that is Jannah. That's the best deal. Paradise? Paradise. Jannah? The best deal that anyone can get inshallah. Now some people, I, I, you know, again, just another misconception, they say Jannah, all these... Muslims are focusing on is the 72 virgins and all they want is this pleasure and you know they're looking for this party and paradise and they yes. got to throw a bomb on themselves. What do you got to say about this? Well a bomb on yourself is totally against Islamic law. Suicide bombing is totally forbidden in Islamic law. Uh -huh. No matter what the justification is. The number one most punished crime in Islamic law is indiscriminate killing of innocent people. There's forbidden. No, forbidden. No, there's no more punished crime in Islam than in discriminant killing of innocent people. Yet, when you think about it, and it's true that there's going to be 72 versions and all these, in paradise, the definition of paradise that every pleasure that you can possibly imagine or not imagine is available. Of it is sex. Sex is not a bad thing. A bad thing when it's not done with the wife on earth. But in paradise, everything is available for the wishing. Any pleasure that you can imagine is available for the wishing, including sex. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? I mean, people You're are, in paradise. People are lying, uh, stealing, they're, they're, they're power hungry, so they can enjoy the pleasures of this life, isn't yes. it? Yes. You know? And then when you obey God, and you never show harm or hurt to anyone, and God want to give you His reward according to His ultimate generosity, it's everything for the wishing. Anything. Anything. That you heard or not heard. But we want to do it the wholesome way. Yes. Now, isn't it that we as Muslims, those who have submitted to God, isn't the one, number one thing on our mind when we get to paradise is to, to have the pleasure of our Lord and to see our Lord? Beyond actually, all the, the... Actually, the two biggest pleasures of a believer of God, and when we say believers of God as Muslims, we're also talking about the believers of Jesus, peace be upon him, the believers of Moses, peace be upon him. These are all Muslims and followers of the prophets of Islam. The two top pleasures of paradise, the number one is that you're going to be able to see the face of your creator of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that no one was able to see before even the prophets of God and you're gonna hear the Quran recited with his voice. Amazing. The second thing is that on top of that with all the pleasures that you're gonna have in paradise that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would ask you a question are you satisfied and you're gonna say how could, I, how could I not be satisfied with all the blessings from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would answer well now let me give you more satisfaction 
I will bestow my own satisfaction upon you forever. I'll never be mad or angry at you. And that is the second best pleasure in paradise. So we should strive for paradise. This life is short and that's what we want. And that's what you mentioned. And we're talking about Sharia. Now continue on because is this the boogeyman coming to get you? Because they'll hold up the signs, people get frightened and say, oh, if Sharia law comes, now you're going to be subjugated, all your rights are going to be taken away. What is Sharia coming Very to do? Very good question. Look at any law, even man-made laws. They're going to be a law that rewards good doers and a law that has a penal co code that when you murder someone, you're going to be executed. In any law, there's two ends of the spectrum, even man-made laws. Sharia, the law in Islam, has a totally different purpose. Nothing would explain Sharia in Islam more than or better than the verse 157 in Surah Al Araf. Whatever that is good for you, short term, long term, whether you're aware of it or not, good for you or good for your society, that God knows it's ultimately good for you, that is what is halal, that is what's allowed for you. And whatever that is harmful, hurtful for you, whether you're aware of it or not, for your society or community, short term or long term, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God knows that it's bad for you, it is forbidden. And through that, you're liberated. And it's the true wisdom of Allah, the creator of heavens and earth, that tells you that this is good or bad. This is ultimately good and it's ultimately bad. You follow that. You had that one thing that everyone seeks in the morning, from the president of the United States to the poorest man. What is the right thing to do? Sharia tells you and make it easy for you and guarantees your God-given rights every single day and every single moment of your life. So can we compare, just, just to make some kind of analogy, let's say you have a pot, a pan, a big basket, and you have all these different herbs and spices and everything. Some are good for you, some are bad, but now you have an instructional blueprint from the Creator yes. saying, use this one, it's good for you, this one, leave it alone. Absolutely. This is the same thing in life, so God has determined what's good for us. The Creator, not you or me or any human being, but the Creator is telling us this is good, this is bad for our own benefit. Absolutely, and I, I give a simple analogy. If I tell you I would have Warren Buffett, the genius investor, to advise me financially, or the best doctor in the world to advise me about my health, or the best lawyer in the world to judge, to advise me about my law affairs, I would be the happiest man alive. Imagine if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala creator of heavens and earth, giving you the ultimate advice and for no reward to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He does not want anything from you. That's amazing. That is, that is Sharia law. Let, let, let's take a break and we'll be right back with more here on The Dean Show. Hay solo un Dios. Adóralo a él solo y, y no a su creación. I would go to my room, lock the door, prostrate and cry, saying, God, you know me better than myself. Show me the right way and I will not look back. I will leave everything behind. Allah is our creator and He creates everything and He gives intelligence to people. Rasulullah sure is Muhammad, peace be upon him. Muhammad is one of the last messengers sent from God. Back here on The Dean Show with Imam Mustafa Zaid to bring it home more. We're going to give some more examples, but tell me now because many people, they know who Jesus is, peace be upon him, and this is a fact. We love Jesus. No Muslim is a Muslim unless he believes in Jesus. Absolutely. Moses also, he was one of the messengers of God yes. who taught Islam, submission to the one God, alone yes. without any partners. Did Sharia exist? Did Moses bring Sharia? Ten Commandments, was that Sharia? Absolutely. People are like, Absolutely. wow, you're kidding me. Explain There's this. There's no prophet of God that came and gave a message that that message did not have do and don't. Sharia. That's Sharia. God's that's law. God, that's God's law. Yeah. And the purpose of sending a prophet after a messenger after a prophet is that as humanity evolved, the message need, needed to be enhanced on a need to basis for humanity's needs. Till Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his last prophet with the most comprehensive law, that is Sharia law. And that's the ultimate wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us and benefit us. Many things that some people in the media show about Islamic law or Sharia law, like, you know, they say stoning or this, this, and that, you would discover that these were basic fundamentals of the laws of Moses, the Torah, and at the time of Jesus, peace be upon him. And people talking as if this is invented by Islam. Mm -hmm. And they don't even know how it's applicable in Islam or what are the conditions for. And there's total ignorance out there that Muslims share their belief mm -hmm. in not explaining to other people. But law is the law and has been there. The message of God is one. All these are prophets of Islam. Prophet Muhammad is the last prophet of Islam. This is amazing because 
I think some people get a little bit frustrated or angry because, you know, we love Jesus, peace be upon him. But he's not God, nor did he ever claim to be God, yes. nor a son of God or any of these things. He's yes. a mighty messenger of God. Yes. And we got the evidence to prove it. And some people might get a little upset because they have this attachment to Jesus, but we're not trying to offend nobody. We're just trying to relay the truth. And let's dialogue. Let's talk about it. So didn't Jesus, what we allegedly have attributed to him, he said, I have not come but to fulfill the law. I didn't come to break one of the least of the commandment, the least of the Sharia. I came, I was sent to bring back the lost sheep to the house of Israel. The message of Jesus peace be upon him was to bring pe people back to the Ten Commandments after the modifications and the deviation that some people did. Sharia. Sharia, yes. Ten but, Commandments are ten items, ten paragraphs, articles of law. That's what it is. I think we need to just, you know, exp like we're doing here and we're devoted to uh, helping people understand because they hear these Arabic words and they get a little bit bent yes. out of shape because they never heard the word. But when you define it, you say Ten Commandments, Jesus implementing Sharia, you like start to, you know, calm down a little bit because you actually, understand Actually, one, one of the things, and, and actually we need to clarify that for our viewers at some point, stoning. Uh, the bashers of Islam or haters of Islam would bring stoning and say that's barbaric, this, this, this and that. Go to Leviticus 2010 in the Old Testament, stoning. Go to Deuteronomy 22, 22, stoning. The famous story in the Bible of John about whoever was without a, uh, a sin should cast the first stone. What is casting stones? It's stoning. Islam did not invent that. And actually, when you see the mandates and the conditions that Islam applies for that crime, it's impossible to prosecute or convict one, you know, convict anyone according to stoning. The first thousand years of Islam, there were only three cases of stoning, and there were adamant confessions. They were not even caught. And scholars tried every way possible to make these people leave their confessions and escape the punishment, but they were adamant confessions. I made a sin. I want to be punished according to the law of God. Mm -hmm. In a thousand years, a millennia, no one was caught with the law of stoning in Sharia law that people, you know, are being scared about. Examples. Give us some more examples so this can really hit home because when you implement what God wants you to do, not man or a monkey or anything in creator, but the creator. If we come to a, a firm conviction that the creator revealed this, it's from him, it's an instruction manner from him, shouldn't he be the one who knows best? He's the most wise? So give us some more, some more practical examples of Sharia and how beneficial it is if implemented. Well, I go back to the, the, the main point. You have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, creator of heavens and earth, advising you. That is giving you the ultimate wisdom without you being technologically savvy or advanced or have the best advisors in the world. Example, 1997, the American Secretary of Health was so happy and proud that America was the first country, Western country, civilized, developed country that bans feeding dead animal parts to live animals. Why? They discover that that's what causes mad cow disease, and all kind of myriad of animal problems that can be transferred to humans. And I left. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi in his correct hadith said, quote unquote, do not feed dead animal parts to live animals. 1400 years ago, to Bedouins who did not know how to read or write. But when you obey the Sharia law, you will get the ultimate benefit that billions of dollars and 1400 years of advanced research and technology would give you. 1400 years ago, in a desert with no schools and libraries. Uh, Muslims are banned, uh, men uh, are forbidden to wear gold. Women are allowed to wear gold. We do not know why. A lot of people say because of vanity. But well, my wife is standing next to me wearing all that gold. That's vanity too. I own that. She owns that. Yeah. You know, scientists, not Muslim, I want to add, discover that uh, when you put gold to your skin, gold has this feature that has active particles that actually go through the parcels of the skin and get into your bloodstream. Gold as a toxin in your bloodstream is very harmful. It puts all your hormonal balance out of whack and it's very harmful for men. And some people would say, well, women have skin too, what's wrong? Women has the, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had afforded him, that they have the monthly course that discharges all these toxins out of the body. Subhanallah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you that 1400 years ago. You obey, you get the wisdom that we just got two years ago. And so on and so forth. One of the most uh, uh, endorsed and, and asked to uh, uh, do prayer of the day is the Fesh prayer. Fesh prayer is like usually five, six o'clock in the morning. And a lot of people would say, why would I wake and fed? And there's tremendous reward for it. Scientists would tell you that if you wake up at five o'clock in the morning, you're 65% less 
subject to having strokes. Why? You sleep for straight eight hours, your blood would go, uh, the viscosity would actually go much higher because the, 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 the heart is, uh, you know, you're asleep, so it's not pumping that much blood. And then, you know, clots and, you know, strokes are more, you know, possible to happen than when you actually are walking or running or doing things like that. When you break your sleep and wake up to pray Fajr, you just bring your blood levels to the normal thing. So you pray and you go pray, sleep again for a couple more hours. You are 65% less likely to have a stroke or a clot than any other human being. What drug in the world can do that? You obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you get the benefit. Fasting, it actually triggers the longevity gene in your body. Uh, there's a, a new... Uh, uh, product that's called Resipratrol, I think it's advertised all over the internet, that actually a 90 years old man would look like 60 years of age. The second thing that does that, that activates that longevity gene, is fasting. Continue at periods of hunger. Mandated. It's not for the benefit of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it's for our own benefit. This is Sharia. Sharia. This is the law that God Almighty, out of His love, He loves yes. us. Yes. He loves us more yes. than our mothers, yes. our fathers. So he wants what's best for us. But can our perception sometimes of what we think might be good for us actually be bad for us? And what we yes. think what is bad for us maybe is good for us? It's right there in the Quran. You might think that something is good for you, but it's actually bad for you. And vice versa. What is the ultimate good? What is the ultimate bad? It's in Sharia law. And I want to just bring emphasis to our viewers of the beautiful hadith of Prophet Muhammad in Sahih al-Bukhari. He was standing with his companions and there was a woman standing there hugging her baby with love and care, you know, breastfeeding the baby. And Prophet Muhammad looked at the woman and said, you know what, do you think that such a woman would throw her baby, that baby that she loves so much, in fire? They said, of course not, O Prophet of Allah. He said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, your creator, is more merciful and kind to you than that woman to her own child. That's amazing, that's amazing, that's amazing. And we're getting to learn more about the most misunderstood way of life in the world today, Islam, yet is the fastest growing way of life in the world. It's the same way of life that was lived by Jesus. Didn't Jesus yes. live Islam? Uh, was uh, Jesus a Muslim? A mighty prophet of Islam, not just a Muslim. And when someone says, hold on, you, Jesus was a Muslim, prove it. How was he a Muslim? Practiced Islam. Came to bring about the Ten Commandments. What is the first commandment? God is one. God is one is what makes you a Muslim. That's it. And obeying the messengers? Absolutely. If you lived during the time of Jesus, would you have to worship him or obey his? Obey him and he would be my prophet and I would be a follower of him. And saying that, I just want to add, the only non-Christian faith that believes in Jesus, peace be upon him, is immaculate birth. And the virginity and the greatness of Virgin Mary is Islam. The only holy scripture ever that has an entire chapter named after Virgin Mary is Islam. Okay. And yet some people come to you and say, you know what, he's a Muslim, he's anti-Christian automatically. Where do you get that from? Only God knows. So we're not anti-Christ. Absolutely not. Because Christ was the Messiah. This is what it means. Christ, yes. Messiah, and this is the title given to Jesus, and we believe He was the Messiah. Absolutely. This is amazing, amazing. People are learning so much here on The Dean Show. I hope you're benefiting. I surely am. We'll see you in a few. We'll be right back. And if we're going to worship something, I figured I might as well worship the Creator instead of any of the creations. Now, in, upon investigating all the religions, I remember finding out the meaning of what Islam is, what a Muslim is. Those who surrender their self to God is a Muslim. Those who surrender, submit to God, God's will. That is it. Islam was pure. It was just, you just pray to God, your creator. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. If a lies by my side, I am not afraid to stand alone. I am not afraid to stand alone. Back here on the Dean Show, and we're talking about the Creator's Law, Sharia. And you gave some wonderful examples and some things that I am just fascinated, I'm sure the viewers are, the gold analogy, the prayer, the fasting, and when you do it 
And sometimes you don't know the wisdom behind it, but now someone for the first time is seeing and hearing the wisdom, you're just even more just impacted and your faith even rises because we don't just do blind faith. Our faith is based on knowledge, yes. proofs, and evidences. Give us some more of these wonderful uh, Actually, examples. one of the clearest examples is that throughout history, uh, if you look at Islamic law and have any knowledge about it, as bigger the damage can be, the punishment is and the warning and the prevention against is in Islamic law. Uh, people are baffled about, in, at the end of uh, chapter 2, Surah Al-Baqarah, that how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put such a severe punishment and warning to people who deal with usury, which is forbidden in the Bible too, eating interest, dealing with interest, which people take for granted nowadays. Then will be harbin min Allah, as if you are waging a war against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not just disobeying God or angering God, you're waging a war against Him. And people said, you know, this is a part of business or economy. Why the punishment is so severe? Comes 2008. They spent so far close to six trillion dollars to try to bring the world economy to normal, and they couldn't. Ten million jobs are lost in America alone. The country of Iceland went bankrupt, and the country of Greece went bankrupt. And if it wasn't for international aid, people put ATM cards in the machine and did not get cash out. And the devastation of businesses and lives and marriages and so on and so forth. And when you tell them what happened, they will tell you excessive leverage. What is excessive leverage? Excessive riba that God had warned about 1,400 years ago. Interest. Yes. God warned us about it. Absolutely. Even in the Bible. As if you are waging a war. Why it's a war against God? Because the damage can be as severe. Imagine how much effort you need to do to create $10 trillion worth of economic activity. Gone in a second. Families destroyed. Homeless people Business now. destroyed. Countries destroyed. Countries and destroyed. And we are praying, praying now, that with all the efforts that maybe in two, three years, we get back close to the normal of 2007, after that disaster in 2008. I just like to make a simple analogy. Tell me, is this on the money? Tony Knuckles, who used to be the biggest loan shark, for instance, he got sophisticated, put a suit and tie on, and now he became a banker. Because now you go and you borrow 100, and you got to give 100 times more back you know, 10,000 or 1,000. Yes. This is corruption, isn't it? How does Islam, how does it work in Islam? It's under Sharia? totally forbidden. And if you look at the roots of slavery in the world, aside from Islam, before Islam, it's riba. People borrow money with interest, time passes, it's compounded. And what happens? People, you don't have the money, I'll take your child, you become my slave, I'll take your wife, and so on and so forth. Einstein was asked one day, Who? What, Einstein, Einstein, what is the most powerful idea or thing in the universe? What was his answer? The, the one who discovered the relativity theory and the atomic bomb. He said, compound interest. Wow. Think about it. It's true. This is amazing, amazing, amazing. So now God is saying one thing and we want to do another thing. But isn't it now bad for, it seems like it's bad for business now. For, you know, the few elite that are making the money off these things. Sharia is coming, God's law. And make and it a level playing field for all people. Entrepreneurship, risk taking. You know, hard work is what creates value. Money is not, does not have intrinsic value. It does not create value. You have to couple that with your hard work and risk taking and produce economic activity where people will benefit around you with the jobs that you create and the materials that you buy, not just you deposit money in the bank and sit around and because you're rich, you make more money and more people will get poorer and work harder just to be at the same level. So Islam gives now like the alternative. You don't do it this way where the rich keep getting richer and you keep suppressing the poor. It gives an even playing field, you said, for everybody. And, and in a nice way, not in a communist way where like richness and being rich is bad. To the contrary, Prophet Muhammad said a, 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 a Muslim that is strong financially, physically, socially is a better Muslim and more liked by God than a weak Muslim. But be rich in a fair way. That's the, that's the point. That's Islamic law. Be rich in a fair way. Be rich in a fair way. And does it show through history when the Muslim, when those who submitted to all the laws of the Creator, they submitted their will to God's will, they implemented the beautiful injunctions that God told them to implement, didn't this eradicate injustice, poverty, all these evil vices? Listen to this miraculous example. The highest living standard in recorded in human history was the living standard at the time of Khalifa Umar ibn Abdul Aziz. He's the grandson of Umar ibn Khattab, and people consider him the fifth guided Khalifa. I'll tell you the level of freshness that they became at. 
And the Muslim treasury was flowing with money. They went around and said, if you have debts, we'll pay it for you. Regardless where you did, did you do the money or how did you borrow the money, people did not come forward. If you want to get married, we'll pay for all your marriage expenses. People did not come forward. They had the money. This is Islam when it's Islam, implemented. yes, yes. Anyone who won money for any purpose, people did not come forward. They had so much money, they had to buy seeds and throw it in the desert so the living souls of bears would benefit from it other than keep it as money. There were literally no people in jail. Find me one country today, like at the time of Arab Aziz, that if you crippled or handicapped by any chance, that the government would assign a fully paid salaried employee from sunrise to sunset to take care of all your needs and you don't have to pay a penny. Happened at Umar Aziz is not happening today. How much time did he you know, accomplish that? Two years of applying Islam correctly. Real quick, real quick, we only have two more minutes. We're out of time. Tell us now, because uh, the argument, and we just want to be fair, someone says, well, look, how come all the Muslims are backwards nowadays? What are you talking about? And the Muslims are the most corrupt, this, this, and that. What do you got to say? Ask me if Islam is applied correctly or not. Don't ask me if Muslims are ruled correctly or not. You got good That's and, the trick. You got good and bad, ugly all over the place. Yes. So this is an ugly example of when you don't implement Islam. The example you gave, this is an historical fact when Islam was implemented by the verbatim word of God, the Quran, and the Sunnah, the way of the last and final message of Prophet Muhammad. It was the highest living standard that humanity had ever seen. Okay, this is not some per perfect utopia we just conjured up in our head. This it already is happened hat. for years, it documented. Happened. You can check this out. Absolutely. Oh, this is amazing. Thank you. Uh, the lies about Muhammad, peace be This is childish. People are, you know, they, they can't beat the truth through, through uh, correct dialogue and debate. So they got to lie. So you have written a book to counter all the lies about the last and final message of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Where can they, where can they get 55 of them. Where can they get this book? Amazon.com and BarnesandNoble.com. And there's a website for the book itself. Inshallah, the lies about Muhammad.com. The lies about Muhammad.com. Thank you. We look forward to having you again back here on the show. May Allah reward you in abundance. Thank you very much. Amazing, amazing when you come with a sincere heart, open mind, and you come to the Muslims to learn about Islam. What do you learn? You learn the truth. You don't want to go to, 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 to Hitler to learn about Christianity, do you? No. You don't want to go to a... To, to a a garbage man to learn how to do heart surgery. No, you want to go to the people who know about Islam. You come to the scholars, the people who really can teach you the correct way. And you're coming here to the Dean Show where we got those people to teach you and you can get enlightened and maybe even accept the most misunderstood way of life in the world today, Islam, which is practiced by more, over than one point, more than 1.5 billion people all across across the globe and you got to learn about Sharia, which is simply, at Moses' time, it was the Ten Commandments. Jesus called people to Sharia, all the messengers of God. They either brought it, taught it, implemented it, and the last and final messenger, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, who was a brother to Jesus, to Moses, who called people to nothing new. He wasn't the founder of Islam, but he taught the same thing that Jesus taught, to establish a direct dialogue connection with the one God, the Creator and to worship Him alone and not His creation. And then do the good things that God told you to do and stay away from all the harm, all the things that can affect you in a negative way. And this is Islam. We'll see you next time. Until then, peace be unto you. Come and see what everyone's talking about. If you find one contradiction, it can't be from God. But the rational idea, the rational explanation is you do your best. Give up worshiping God is one. I will never give up spreading this message. I hope that you take that necessary step. You don't know if you're going to live till tomorrow. So you got to find that urgency to do the right thing right now. If you say that you do not believe in Jesus, you have stepped outside of Islam. You cannot be a Muslim. It is a tenet our faith to. It's cold, it's late, everybody's sleeping. I arise and ask Allah to forgive me. Oh Allah, you see, oh Allah, you know all the sins I do. I turn to you to forgive my sins and my heart. I'm your simple slave.